So this is what you've all been waiting for. Most of the parts of the fuselage that we've been working on all coming together as one. And as you can see, there's Keith sitting in there and he's six foot one. So he's got all kinds of room in there. So there's plenty of room in the cabin. And uh, we've actually borrowed some seats um, for this sort of photo or this video. And those are out of a VW uh, Phaeton. So they're quite large sort of seats. And uh, we just got them sat in there just so you can get a, a feel of how it's going to be um, in the real aircraft. And of course, our seats won't be as heavy as those things. They weigh a ton. Um, but they'll have a similar sort of uh, size, maybe actually a little bit larger um, in terms of width. So let's step back a little bit before we had it all together. And here you can see uh, the upper fuselage and just sort of the nose shell uh, put in place. None of the bulkheads uh, in place there yet. Um, it gives you kind of an idea. And obviously the window is not in there yet. And there's the view kind of in the back there. It's hard to sort of scale or gauge size in there. And there you can also see the nose gear door cut out there. So the door frames all fit in really nicely. We've still got a little bit of fit, fit and finish to do, but everything's sort of coming together as planned. And here you can see there's a couple of Clecos that we've got just holding uh, some of the parts uh, in place. And really doesn't take much because most of the parts are all flanged, so they fit only in a certain spot. But I've uh, just got a couple there just holding things so they don't even move a millimetre. And then there's the... Uh, aft pressure bulkhead and then on the right side the uh, aft bulkhead. So here's the uh, upper fuselage with the door frames there and, and with the windshield sort of put in place. And as you can see from that uh, upper fuselage mould that we had, once everything's cut out there's not a lot of part left there, um, but that was the idea just to create those frames so we wouldn't have to sort of do those by hand. And they actually fit really nicely with the lower fuselage. And in the meantime, here's the um, mold for the nose compartment door. And here it's just been waxed and um, just taped around the edges there just in preparation for laying that one up because we wanted to get that one finished as well so we could put the door on, on the nose. And uh, here's Jeff actually laying up the part. And I believe he just had two layers of light or maybe it was two layers of uh, medium carbon for that one and with a bit of core in between it's a very lightweight part not structural really and there's the core he's putting in just a quarter inch thick core there so it didn't take long to lay that up in fact laid it up um, in the morning and it was released by the afternoon so that's uh, a record for us at least on this project and here's Jeff just actually trimming off the edges of it there and I didn't get to weigh that one yet but just picking up in my hands I think it weighs about two pounds it's super light And this is with the upper fuselage in place um, and those uh, bits of ply that we have on the floor there were just for sitting uh, those seats on. They're not actually going to be in the aircraft when we're done. So there's still a little bit of uh, fitment to do on these pieces but um, most of it's done. Here's the view how it will be from the back seat. And I'm using kind of my wide angle lens on my phone right now so you kind of get a, a feel of uh, what it sort of feels like back there and it's kind of neat it's very kind of private back in the back seat because of those narrow sort of uh, higher windows but you can actually see out if you're depending on you know how we configure the seats there's still plenty of headroom and you'll be able to see out fine and of course you have great visibility out the front as well and I'm just actually sitting on a little block of foam in the back here just sort of sort of raise me up a little bit and they actually can see through the um, the opening there in the rear pressure bulkhead that'll obviously be covered up and everything's going to get trim work on it and there you can see i'm just under six foot tall and i'm laying down there and just on a slight angle i can actually lay completely out without um running into the um either side of the cabin and this is the view through the uh opening where the air intake is going to be that isn't quite blocked up yet and just as a side note there the um seats in there actually further back than what they'll be when you're flying so there'll be even more room in the back there of course those seats are quite large um, in terms of how thick they are in the backrest so the ones that we have in there won't be quite so large anyway this is the view uh, from on top of our uh, cnc machine so you can kind of get a different perspective of how the fuselage is coming together and uh, i don't know about you but i think it looks pretty cool Oh, and if you're wondering, we left the plastic on those rear windows just to protect them. 
So here's another kind of view with uh, nobody sitting in there right now, but there's the glare shield and obviously the panel isn't in place yet, but you kind of get a feel um, of how much space there is. And, and there's all kinds of leg room in there and you can't even reach the, um, the forward bulkhead there when you're sitting in the normal position with your feet. So that's kind of neat. Um, and this is with the wide angle lens. So you get a little bit of a different perspective there. Just had a little bit of foam at the back there uh, holding up that uh, glare shield because we don't have the braces for that yet. Now, I know I'm a little bit thin and agile, but I was uh, actually able to get into the back there without even moving those seats. So <laughs> that's how much space there is between the door frame and the back of that seat. And here's the view how you'll be sitting in the co-pilot seat. And uh, I'm just stoked about this because the visibility is great at the front and there's looking sort of over into the back seat there and next up we'll be sort of working on uh, getting the, the actual doors built so we can get those on and speaking of the doors here is uh, the left hand side door um, plug in uh, fiberglass ready to have the putty sprayed on there so it can be milled and so we got actually both of those done this week got them in putty and got them both milled and I've actually managed to dial in our machine a little bit more just uh, late this afternoon, but we haven't had a chance to t test it yet because you can see on this one there's some sort of striations in the finish there because the Z still has some play in it. But I think I've actually made quite a large improvement this afternoon, so we'll see when we come back from Oshkosh how that turns out. And also this week the guys laid up the moulds here for these uh, side uh, rear cabin braces. So that didn't take them too long. In fact, they did the whole thing, both of those in one day um, with six layers, you know, one layer of glass and five layers of, of uh, carbon on them. So really not uh, too many problems. They zipped through them uh, very quickly. So those will be released um, probably when we come back from Oshkosh. There's no real urgency on those. And then we'll lay them up. And these are the nose gear braces. They got their final coat of primer and they're with a the guide coat just sprayed on. So the guy's actually in the process of finishing uh, the sanding and then ultimately the waxing on those. And likewise with the um, braces here for the glare shield, they got their final coat of primer and a little bit more guide coat. So it won't be long and uh, those will be ready to pull molds from. And next here's a bit more of an update on what's happening for the engine compartment. So here's the... Um, the, cow the lower cowling and you can see I've basically louvered that so all of the heat that's uh, coming off the engine and you know coming through the inlet uh, can come out the back there and we need to have about 150 percent uh, area there compared to the maximum um, inlet size that we'll have and obviously our inlet is adjustable so the um, the size of the louvers there is quite large and then uh, moving the cowling you can see the exhaust system there and yes we're actually going to put a muffler on this system so Coming out the turbo, it'll be quiet as it is, but then going through a small muffler uh, should reduce the sound again by another 15 to possibly 20%. And you may have noticed that I have specifically made the exhaust coming out the right side of the aircraft. And the reason for that is that most airports have left traffic. So when you're making left turns, the noise from the exhaust will be going up in the air as opposed to going down towards the ground. And if you recall from last video, I had to go over to Mark's shop during the week to solve uh, the problem we had with... Um, the Y pipe and trying to fit um, our wastegate in. So this is the wastegate that we're going to be using and we actually figured all that out. So you'll see uh, how that fits into place later on. So lastly, uh, let me just go through the parts here. So this is the radiator that I'm highlighting there and this is the cold air intake. There's the air filter and there's sort of like a mock-up of the turbo. It doesn't really look like that, but anyway, and there's the rest of the exhaust and the muffler and finally the exhaust outlet out the side of the cowling there. And I thought you might like to see a little bit more video of the fuselage, so here it is. And you can see there that the nose door, nose compartment door is just sat in place. We haven't had a chance to sort of do the final trim yet, so that actually um, sort of fits in where it's supposed to. So it's just sort of taped there. And also to the uh, windshield, I'm not sure if you can see there, it's not sitting, sitting completely flush against the outside of the fuselage and that again we still need to do a little bit of uh, relieving in, inside there just to make it fit tight. Um, and unfortunately we've taken the seats back now to the guys, uh, Jeff over there across the highway from us, who was nice enough to lend them to us. Um, but uh, it doesn't have that old car smell in there anymore, <laughs> so seats with a leathery kind of smell as you can imagine. But uh, 
Um, so we'll have to do without seats now until we get the ones that are actually going to go in the prototype. But yeah, it was fun to have those in there and give us a real good feel of uh, how it's going to be in the in the prototype once we're flying it. And once again, here's the view from the back seat, and we have uh, Keith and Zach sitting up front. And keep in mind that uh, Keith's seat, especially there, is much further back than it would be um, when you're flying. So there's all kinds of room in the back uh, right now, but there's going to be even more. Uh, when that seat would be moved forward to what would be the flight position. So we're super happy with um, how things are working out. I'm really happy with uh, this, the space in the cabin. That was exactly what I was going for. But we've still got lots more work to do, and we'll be working hard to uh, hopefully get the uh, Raptor flying early next year. And finally, uh, for everybody going to Oshkosh, just one final reminder. I'll see you guys uh, all on uh, Thursday morning at 8.30 in the airplane workshop, and uh, looking forward to... Uh, catching up with everybody. It's going to be a lot of fun. So we'll see you all there. And thanks again for watching.